Today I'm gonna to go over chapter one point five point one point three currents of Griffith directional dynamics. Anyway, so we're talking about currents in this uh, section of the chapter, and we have to look at the fact that um, we are surrounded by them. So it it is a good thing to know how they work. We I have drawn here a wire this black straight line as you can see and I'm gonna go talk about the current that flows through it. First of all, current that is symbolized with an I as a direction. And since it's a direction, current is a vector. Is a vector. Um, therefore we have to think about this not as just the number but also as a um uh, as a number with a direction. You know, how do we find it? Well, if we look at a, at a point, actually, let's start from a, from a section. So we have a section right here that we think about, and the section is long V dl, uh, with V being the velocity uh, of the part uh, of our, uh, sorry, I am totally confused if I was wrong, V dt. Um, and write as V delta T, because we're going to talk about DT. V delta T, which is, of course, equals to a certain length. And inside this length, there's going to be a certain amount of charge, which is going to be equals to, well, the length times the uh, density, which is, uh, in this case, a linear density, since we have a linear wire. And we can write this, of course, as V delta T times the linear density. And this is the amount of charge that is in the uh, in this uh, cone of length L. Okay, but what if instead we take a single point? I will call P. Well, this single point, of, the single point P actually does not have length. So a length actually approaches zero. And so all the charges that is contained inside of it is gonna be equals to uh, the linear density. Uh, now, of course, how much linear density is in there depends on our um, on on how much how fast the uh, surf did, did our electrons flow through it, and this of course because if you think about this, if you think about this with the sectional area, which in because we're calculating it's not, we have a lot of particles moving or well, a lot of particles coming through it, and the more part the faster particle R, the faster our um, the more the more charge is going to pass through it, and this means that the only way to get L approaching zero is going to be equal. It's going to be by making dt approach zero. In the in our case, then v never approaches zero. Uh, we cannot really make it approach zero. Um, well, we we could if there's no current, but at that point there's no current because of course there's no flow of electrons. So V does not approach zero, but R D T approaches zero. Anyway, the amount of charge that is in there is then gonna be equal to our linear density and uh, times V. And of course, since it's flowing and it is a vector, it is the current vector because it is an amount of charge lambda it is moving uh, v and it is a vector from v so it has everything that the current wants uh, this is pretty easy to see but uh, well easy to see once you once you realize what it is um, <clears throat> anyway one more thing that you can look at is uh, for example uh, the, our magnetic force that we looked at in the previous chapters in the previous videos is going to be equals to our uh, v cross B. But when we're talking about several charges, oh, sorry, sorry, of course, times Q. When we're talking about several charges, then it's going to be equal to the sum of all these charges from I to N. Of course, we don't know how many charges there are there. Uh, of V cross B. And this all depends on how many charges we have, so all I. But we can make it easier by using an integral course that includes all the uh, area where the charges uh, pass by and it's going to be equal to the same thing so v cross b in terms of the q i'm going to write the little q this time 
to uh, keep up with the book. Um, one more thing that <coughs> you can look at is how much charge is in there. Well, this is given by RDQ, but we can rewrite this as linear density times dl. Because when we're talking about, for example, this little wire, and we talk about how much charge is in this section over here, well, it's going to be equal to the charge density times L. And, of course, as we have L approaching zero, we're going to have a uh, linear density times DL. Um, and, of course, we have an interval, so we have to keep up. We have to use this notation. I'm going to leave the drawing there in case you didn't want to look at it, but uh, I'll talk about something else. And so we can rewrite this as the integral of V cross B uh, lambda DL. Now you're going to wonder why are we doing this? Well, if you think about this, we can rewrite this. We can use our current formula to rewrite it differently. Because if we take these two elements together, we can say that is I cross B. Uh, this does not break anything mathematically because uh, the product of these two would have been multiplied by the lambda. Anyway, uh, so we can just multiply one uh, one time, and of course we still have two vectors uh, using the cross product, so it, everything works perfectly. Uh, one thing you can think about is the fact that i, the current vector, is usually constant. So, well, we can take this outside of the uh, integral, but how can we do this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We don't know. We know that we can use this little trick of taking the i out and say dl cross b. Actually, there's no vector, but okay. Uh, cross b. And of course, we just take uh, now the i out. It's, it's a constant. Uh, it's pretty much always going to be a constant. So it's a pretty safe assumption. And this is our formula for the uh, magnetic force of this wire. As you can see, uh, the the longer the wire, the uh, greater the magnetic force. But uh, and the longer the wire, actually, even the greater the uh, current going through it. I hope this helped, and let me know if you have any questions.